At this point in time, I'd like to call me in order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And tonight, our invocation will be given by Senior Pastor Bill Rose from the Holly Springs Oasis Church. Am I, is he here? Yeah. There he is. Oh, I did, I'm sorry. Of course you're here. And by the way, he just moved to Holly Springs not so long ago. Yay. And the church is doing very well. And I think you've got some ground that you're uh, going to put a church on pretty soon. Am I correct? With the cooperation of the council. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, I figured that was coming. That's you're on, you're on, Bill. <laughs> We're not there. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Mayor, thank you. and uh, um, I'm honored to be here. Father, we are very thankful uh, for our leadership, for our town's uh, influencers, and I got, I'm grateful that uh, many in this room today have the town's best interest at heart, and I pray that as a part of this meeting that uh, that we would find the areas of common ground, areas that we unite around, that we'd be able to focus on those things rather than our differences. God, I thank you for the variety of perspectives and the variety of wisdom in this room. Um, God, I'm grateful for uh, all that you're doing in our town from, from public education, which we are entitled to, it seems, but God, it is a blessing. Uh, God, I'm, I'm thankful for uh, what you're doing in and through the local businesses in our town. God, I thank you for the growing diversity that's happening in our town. And uh, Father, I pray that that would continue. Uh, I pray for uh, those uh, in our town who are less fortunate, that maybe struggle from month to month, that they would um, find hope and refuge, and uh, they would begin to grow in, in their uh, uh, endurance for life. And I pray, Father, for um, people who are far away from you in terms of faith. God, for those who maybe don't have any faith or aren't religious. God, I pray that um, maybe one day when they turn and recognize that you're right beside them, that it would be a blessing to them to know that you were there with them all along. Um, and God, I thank you for tonight's meeting. I pray for wisdom and clarity uh, as decisions are made and um, arguments are made, and uh, God, I pray your hand of blessing uh, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item number four, adjustment of approval of January 21st, 2020 meeting agenda. Mayor Pertem. Motion to adopt the January 21st, 2020 meeting agenda with no changes. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item number five is a public comment period. And uh, to remind everybody, it's your purpose to give public feedback, suggestions, request the council. You don't expect action during this meeting. Uh, topics that require additional information will be referred to the town manager or appropriate staff. Please keep your comments to approximately three minutes. If someone has covered what you're going to say, you can pass, although there's only two, so I don't think that's going to happen. And thank you for your consideration. So I'll open public hearing, and we'll ask Brenda Compton. I didn't see Brenda. There she is. Didn't see you. Exactly. Brenda Compton. Name and address again, please. Good evening, town council members. Happy New Year. It's been about a month since we've been here. I'm speaking on behalf of the Yarborough family, the White family that has the 19.5 acres that is known as the Village Gate Project and has come before the Town Council uh, last month. Uh, I have been requested uh, by the Yarborough family and the White family to come back before the Council to say there's been dialogue between the uh, Town Council, uh, the attorneys, the staff, and the developer for this case. But I really am going to concentrate on the Yarboroughs at this juncture, the Yarboroughs and the Whites that are sitting over there on South Main Street, watching traffic go by, watching time tick by, watching things happen while government moves slowly. We're, we have not gotten the developer's agreement that was suggested. We've been working towards that. I understand that something is forthcoming this week. But I would employ the council, employ the council to please consider the time elements involved in this, the families that have their lives at stake here with decisions that are being made and uh, we, it's an emotional thing for everybody, but um, at the staff meeting that we had, I guess a few weeks ago that they were there, I think they got to see a side of the community that 
after living here 150 years, five, six generations, they're seeing people make decisions about their property, their land, what they've been bringing to the town of Holly Springs, how they've been bringing it, what they've been doing to try to let the town do what they need to do to grow while they sit right over there and have no right to vote, no right to do anything, but the town has their fate in their, their, fate in their hands. So I'm coming to the council asking respectfully, please make a decision, make a decision, one that incorporates everybody here in Holly Springs and doesn't leave out those that have spent their life here making this a community, building fire stations, building town halls, patronizing the, the, uh, the services that you, hear, you have here, sending their children to school here, attending the church, building the churches that have been in this town for five generations plus, please, Give them the courtesy of giving, of uh, looking at what they're asking, and, uh, and and voting on it in a fair, concise manner. This developer deserves it. He's spending, he's going to spend millions of dollars here, connecting the dots where they've been laid off, and other people through what other means uh, have not gotten what the town has needed. It's unfair to think that one person can put it all together. So thank you for letting me speak on behalf of the Arbels and the Whites. We look forward to a fair. Uh, hearing that school around. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Next, Wendy D. Again, please repeat name and address. Please repeat your name and address when you get to the podium. Yeah. I thought I could fit, but I could There not. you go. You After got Christmas. it. Um, my name is Wendy Dykema. Address is 108 Holly Glen Court. I'm here from Holly Glen Neighborhood. I think most of us here as concerned Holly Springers agree we're blessed to have either stumbled upon, grown up in, or chosen this community. Uh, probably many of us have driven through Northern Virginia or purposely moved here from there to escape its sellout mentality, which led to overdevelopment. Um, the uniqueness of this town, uh, ironically, is what's bringing its explosive growth. We all love the new setup here. Um, we love the quaintness of this town. Uh, when I got to speak with two of you, now councilmen, but then hopefuls um, at Sug Farm, you voiced that the town needed balance, particularly for its tax basis, quote unquote, so that it wouldn't all fall on homeowners. I think that with the release of the recent um, Wake County new tax items, uh, Wake County is making sure we experience that burden regardless. So can we just approach Holly Springs growth honestly? Um, why rezone? Uh, neighborhoods just to carve out just a couple of buildings um, even more why do it at the expense of children's safety beyond the limits of the police department so far which to their credit we given orange orange flags to walk across death valley aka avon ferry um, so our children are walking across avon ferry waving orange flags hoping that cars don't run them over um, so i'm appealing for help on behalf of my neighborhood um, just speaking for myself um, many of us already take a different route just to get out of Holly Meadow, mm -hmm. Cape Side, Logging Road regardless. Um, so, I mean, for all of our safety and the beauty of this town, I feel like it's at risk. It's growing crazily. This is just my appeal to keep Holly Springs growing quaintly. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks. At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing and uh, go to agenda item 6A the Holly Springs High School football team. I want to say, well, come on down guys. The last time we did this, you all had to introduce yourselves. We're gonna probably skip that tonight. And the coach is here. Ready? And I'm gonna turn this over to you in a second, but I wanna say a couple things while they're here. Even though you can't see me, that's a good thing. Um, this team ended the season with a 5-1 record in the conference and a 10-1 overall. They were first place in their conference. We're going to recognize them for their talent and their character. And they started the season 219 with a school best 7-0 mark before finishing with a 10-1. The most wins in Holly Springs football history and some of the memorable moments over the last two years were beating Middle Creek, yay, at Middle Creek. And perhaps even more importantly, beating Fuquay, Verena, and Garner twice, and winning the Apex Friendship game after losing three starting players to injuries in their first half. This senior group has set a standard for Holly Springs football. Coach, comments? Uh, I, I just want to say that I think 
Thank you very much. Pictures? I can't see anybody. I got, want to take some pictures? Go right ahead. Coach, get in the picture. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> if you notice, I'm not getting up and not going out there for some reason. I don't know what it is. Thank you, guys. Do you want to introduce yourselves on the way out? We did last year. <laughs> it's up to you. If you do, fine. If you don't, just keep going. They do appreciate y'all coming to support them, too. They won't say it's not. <laughs> All right. That's here. You. Great job, you guys. We're proud of all of you. We're very proud. Yes, thank you. Jet Island 6B. Holly Springs Run Club donation to the town. And I'm going to call up uh, Ryan Montaloni, <laughs> Holly Springs Half Marathon Director. Hi again, Ryan. How you doing? You're up, partner. All right, it's me. Looks like you got some good support, too. I do. You got a really big check. Nah. We love big checks. I tried that once, and the, the bank wouldn't take that one up. A lot of fun things. Um, Thank you again for letting me come uh, and speak to y'all. You know, every year, it's the fourth year of, that we've uh, run the Hollow Springs Half Marathon. And, you know, every year I'm the blessed one that gets to stand up and hand this money to y'all. But ultimately, the reason that we're able to do this is because of the four of these folks here and the folks who helped and volunteered and ran and worked and, <laughs> and struggled and fought to... Uh, to have this race and to make it a great event. Um, so again, you know, I, first of all, I just want to thank them. I want to thank all my volunteers. I want to thank everyone who's on the board. You guys, um, you make our community better. And I thank you very much for, for supporting me and us and, and everybody here. Um, also want to thank a couple of folks at the town that have also made this possible. Um, you know, over, over at Parks and Rec, uh, Adam, Lori, and, um, you know, they've, they've been, uh, they're awesome to deal with. They always, they always are. Uh, Captain Patterson, Robbie Parrish, Chief Heron. And the hero this year was uh, Officer Bradshaw, which was back there. Um, she shaved, saved us big time. Would you mind standing for a second? Because Please this stand, is, she's been here about be a year. Because you, and it's her first time. <laughs> I can explain that some other time, but she helped us out big time this year. All right. Um, but you know, a couple of quick stats. I actually just calculated these real, calculated these real quick. Um, so, four years of the half marathon, we've had about four thousand participants over those four years. Um, so total, four thousand <laughs> participants. They've run fifty-two thousand eight hundred miles um, and burned about eight million calories. <laughs> That's a couple of Krispy Kreme donuts, I would say. Um, so they've done great. Now, a couple of cool things this year. Um, if for many of you who hopefully were out there, um, U.S. Veterans Corps joined us this year again. Um, there was a helicopter um, present. They flew over top uh, during the national anthem. We had some folks rappelling out of out of the copter, which was cool. super cool. cool, cool. Um, so we appreciated them being there. Um, also, we had some special guests. Um, we had uh, three Major League Baseball umpires who joined us this year, um, raising money for an organization called Ump Cares, which provides. Um, hospital visits and, 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 and gifts to uh, sick children across the country. Just the one race, um, that one event, they raised $7,000 um, for their charity. So we appreciated them joining us um, and being there. Um, and then, of course, you know, our organization, Holly Springs Half Marathon. Um, 
so far up until this year we've donated over one hundred and five thousand dollars to charity just to our community Huge. Um, this year um, we gave some money to Rotary Club Kiwanis uh, we donated money to the Holly Springs uh, High School for a pole vault pit that they've desperately needed which is something that I, we felt that our community should have that we don't have um, we didn't we weren't able to provide for the whole thing do you believe it or not those things are expensive you think they should put a hole in there and they but anyway um, we also had a had a uh, an athlete who was uh, hit by a car this year uh, riding her bike Andrea Thorne and uh, so uh, she, she fought to come back, and she's not the kind of person that's going to um, not continue being an athlete. So uh, we've uh, ordered her a hand cycle so she can continue to uh, participate and, and race the way she, or she can. Um, and that leaves this. And then we have this big check, um, again, to donate to the Howard Springs Parks and Rec Department to be used for... Um, Greenway improvements. We've already been talking a little bit about different different ways we can increase or help or help our parks and our uh, greenways and whatnot. So, um, Adam. Adam Hoffman, <laughs> better known as Shorty. Good looking crew. Uh, and as always, we do have some gifts for as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. <laughs> they were heavy this year. They, be they were heavy last year. Oh, man, I'm not used to getting one of these without moving. Thank you. Oh, next year you have hey, cool. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't run it this year. Next year. I'll see it. Add it to the collection. I appreciate it. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Ryan. You want the check? Yeah, the check. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. All of you did a great job. Great medal. Agenda item 6C. Need a motion real quick. Oh, yeah, we do do the motion. Excuse me. Yeah, please. Motion to accept a donation from Holly Springs Half Marathon on the amount of $15,000 for town park improvements. Second. Let me make a second. All favor. Aye. 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 Folks, motion passed unanimously. I just accepted that. Well, never mind. Agenda <laughs> item 6C. Shante Picard, Holly Springs Chamber of Commerce. Um, I want to introduce her to you if you haven't had the chance to meet her. She is the executive new uh, executive director of the High Springs Chamber. She was recently named that, and I'd like to invite her to the podium. I have a couple more things on your way up. She joined the chamber last year as the events and membership engagement manager. She worked previously with the Disney Cruise Line. I love that one. Quantience Weaver Restaurants and Hotels and Honda Aircraft Company. And Sean, I think she flew an F-16. <laughs> I'm not sure of that. So, Sean, Tay, it's a pleasure having you here. And I met your family. They have wonderful. And uh, I just think they must have got married awfully young in life to have you because uh, they look like your, your mom looks like your sister. <laughs> That's a compliment, right? Yeah. So I, I'm sure you want to say a few words, but again, very pleased to have you on board, and, and thank you for coming. Well, thank you, Mayor, Town Council, and Town officials. This is truly an honor. <laughs> um, I, I just can't say enough. I feel so fortunate that every day I get to partner with such extraordinary and passionate business talent. I'm relatively new to the Holly Springs area, and in a short amount of time have gotten to learn how much passion there really is uh, with Holly Springs. Gotten to know a lot about this town in a short amount of time and what it means to the residents, businesses, and big question that uh, uh, we will receive, believe it or not, is what is a chamber of commerce? <laughs> By, <laughs> it's true. <coughs> By definition, a chamber of commerce are a group of individuals getting together to promote the business interests of the business community. 
And what we do with that really will define the story of that particular Chamber of Commerce. The Holly Springs Chamber of Commerce, we work together as a team. We're now going into 26 years. And in a short amount of time, we're already growing to almost exceeding 400 business members. We come together as a team and are really looking forward to 2020 and are so thankful to our largest investor and contributor, the town of Holly Springs. That contribution goes a long way. And in, in some of the ways that we're excited to bring up to you today when it comes to 2020 is uh, we're looking at ways that our volunteers can come together in five different parts of the organization, uh, an ambassador team, to really help engage not only with community, uh, but also within our, our chamber membership to really add that value. I've said to teams in the past, value is worth created. Building upon that worth will truly contribute to the value that those will take away. Uh, we can also uh, count on an events committee. Uh, this team of volunteers, they come together from all different uh, businesses to help put on uh, those awesome events that we can count on for networking and also providing a, another story to tell, whether uh, this is events where we're helping with community engagement. We finished out 2019 strong with two sizable donations, uh, one to the Holly Springs Food Cupboard in the amount of $10,000. We came together for the fifth annual Great Screens and Giving Gala. It was a fun time and saw many of the town council and, uh, that were there, so thank you so much. And we also added uh, in the 11th hour a, an event uh, that uh, was to benefit the Holly Springs High School Choir. They came to the Chamber of Commerce looking for a resource uh, in, in raising funds for their extraordinary trip to London. I don't know if you know this, but they were one of four uh, high schools in the United States that were represented in London for the London Choral Festival. That was an amazing uh, achievement. So these particular endeavors are what makes not only that events committee, but also what we do as a chamber in our community engagement uh, so intriguing. And then we round out uh, with our communications committee, and this is where uh, we're gonna broaden that scope of uh, really the landscape of how we're communi uh, communicating the message when it comes to uh, the chamber, uh, our partnerships, endeavors, um, as well as expanding upon within our community alliance committee. Uh, this is something where we wanted to uh, bring out the Chamber Foundation. This is the foundation within the Chamber of Commerce established in 2017 uh, that uh, the mission is all for offering world-class opportunities to the educational and workforce development communities. Um, and then, of course, we want to reinstate the Government Relations uh, Committee, and this is where we're partnering uh, on state, local, and regional um, initiatives and really furthering that partnership, working very closely, of course, uh, with the town, uh, economic development, and really looking to see where we can take this and offering even more um, of those particular opportunities. All of that collectively uh, are going to contribute not only to community engagement, membership value, our marketing, and networking. So all of this coming together, and what does that say to you? That's the story that we're proud to tell for 2020. Again, I want to thank you to our largest investor and contributor, the town of Holly Springs. The Holly Springs Chamber of Commerce truly appreciates you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let's you. give her a hand, too. Thank please. you. Denia 7A, public hearing, Pimento Tea Room Downtown Development Investment Request. And that would be Irina Kristanovich from the Economic Development Department and one of my Neighbors, yay. Good evening, Mayor. Good, Good evening, evening, members of the council. So the agenda item before you tonight, the purpose of it is to provide you with an overview of the Pimento Tea Room uh, downtown development investment request, which I'll refer in the further you know, presentation as a DDI, and to share with you what has committee talked about and the recommendations that we have before you tonight. And the action is to motion to enter into the uh, DDI agreement with Ms. Uh, Mr. Griffith. Uh, to orient you, we are talking about the property that is located on the uh, northwest corner of Earp and North Main Street. It is the house that you can see on your screen, which is the uh, future home of Pimento Tea Room. 
this is just to give you all of a reminder of the uh, town council approved site plan. Uh, you can see where the uh, existing structure is located. It's roughly about 1,600 square feet. And the, in yellow is the addition to the existing building, which is roughly about 800 square feet. There is also a, a seating patio area and uh, uh, the, the parking lot, the gravel parking lot right behind it. Uh, so for some of you, uh, especially newer uh, council members, the purpose of this program, it's really been in place for a little bit over a decade, and the idea behind this program was to uh, stimulate that private sector investment in our village district area to help the economic growth, to lead that economic effect, to you know present some housing opportunities, uh, most importantly, some job creation and activity in the village district area. And we do feel that this project is doing <coughs> exactly that. So the uh, committee uh, recommends that we uh, enter into agreement that will reimburse the applicant uh, for the public infrastructure piece in the amount of $25,000, which is which represent the maximum contribution that we are allowed to uh, uh, present with, with this policy in place, and also to, the, to do the waiver of all plan review and development fees up to the amount of $18,000. As committee met and met with the applicant face-to-face, -face, we talked about the project. Uh, we, of course, there are some factors that we take into consideration when we you know, come up with these uh, uh, recommendations. And of course, one of them was that, that they're protecting just the very few historic resources that we have in our village district area that is very important uh, uh, you know, to all of us. And they're really keeping that as a part of the Holly Springs identity. Uh, it is a redevelopment, which we also want to encourage and see, uh, especially in our village district area. Uh, uh, the restaurant will attract pedestrian traffic. Uh, we'll also um, employ uh, people, so it will be some job creation there. There will be significant increase in the value of the current structure as well, and they will overall, as a project, will contribute as a, uh, for the improvements in the public infrastructure as well. You have the development agreement uh, uh, before you <coughs> in your packets, but just to highlight some of the performance criteria that we were focusing on in this agreement, and that's that the developer shall endeavor to employ roughly about 20 new employees within a one year of the opening of the restaurant. Um, we also have worked with the uh, developer, and, and I want to just say th this has been a partnership from the, from the beginning, uh, working with them and uh, uh, hoping to see this project to be a success in our downtown. Uh, so when we, uh, s since we have a very few uh, historic structures, uh, we have approached the developer and a client and asked if it would be possible to work towards the landmark designation, and they were very open to that idea. As uh, uh, we went further through the investigation of, of that possibility, uh, working with CAP, uh, th uh, there were some obstacles that presented itself uh, in the way that if you are to uh, demolish or do anything different, any changes inside the building, uh, and uh, also CAP has identified some previously done uh, uh, structures that were moved inside of the walls in the building that uh, this applicant would have to restore everything that has previously done, done with the previous owners as well and not be able to open up this internal wall that really would prohibit them from running a business in that, in that small environment. So they came back to the town and requested us to kind of try to look at the creative ways of still being able to support this business to succeed and get to the highest capacity, but then work in what we are finding what's really important to us, and that's preserving the uh, historic structure of that. So we do feel that what we are presenting before you tonight, and that is to execute a deed of easement, is something that will allow us to actually probably on the longer term be better off with the uh, 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 protecting the historic nature of this building that completely protects the outside of the building as it is right now in its original stage. And it also passes, this easement will pass onto the, even in the future when 
you know, they're ready to retire and sell off the property, this easement goes with the new owners and it's also allow, you know, it's, it's uh, staying with that within the same requirements. Uh, again, a partnership has been extended even to the point that they do understand the importance of this uh, element to the town. So the applicant as well as our planning and zoning department will work together collectively to record all of the changes that have happened in the, uh, inside the building, archive the, the, this, uh, uh, this information so in the future, if the landmark designation is desired by the owner, that can be done. Um, as well, and the deed of easement will still stay and protect the outside of the building. Um, and then uh, also with this agreement, um, we are asking the uh, applicant to come back and report to you before you in about a year time frame uh, to give you a, a, a progress report on their project and, and, their, and their business as well. Uh, the applicant is here with us. If you have any questions, or if you have any questions for me as well. Any, any questions of the applicant or applicants? I have a few questions. Um, I was there over two years ago before I got on when Capillary Preservation presented about the historical preservation uh, opportunities in town. And at that time, I remember they were saying they were focusing on the outside of the building, not the inside. So I have a feeling that as that organization might change the plans, it could make things harder for them to, to get the designation. So being realistic up front, if at the end they do not get the designation, can the town still put some sort of landmark sign up ourselves to recognize the history of that house if it doesn't suit the historical preservation? Um, Yes, the town does have its own historical marker program, and currently it's been budgeted about one sign a year, and so if there is a request to have this one added to our list, I don't see a reason why we would not put this on one of our um, historical markers. So at least we'll have a sign. It's just a matter of will it be a, a recognized as a historical marker on the registry or not, but we could at least identify that house. Correct. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure we can, we can do that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the, my other question was around the timing of the, the deed, of recording of the deed. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any timing in the contract. The thought would be it would be recorded at the same time we execute the DDI. Okay. Just ask. And the other piece of it, I, if I recall correctly, that um, that, that, that easement is contingent, for the, well, that the funding is contingent upon obtaining that easement. Like core pieces. Okay. Okay. Those are my questions. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I have a quick question about the policy. So on our DDI policy, reading through that, and then looking at what was requested by the applicant, um, those are requests for assistance on both pieces of the public infrastructure as separate items um, to be reimbursed at the maximum of 20,000, 25,000 piece to up to the 50,000. So I'm just wondering if that's a, a confusion with our policy, the way it's written. Because it is written somewhat vaguely as far as reimbursement for that and since this property does border or has road improvements on two sides of the property which is not the case for all properties so some properties will only have a single side to be reimbursed yeah. uh, rather than two sides so I, I just was curious as to how you reconcile that as a committee so as a committee we kind of looked at that's correct uh, uh, the applicant approached us trying to be a little bit more creative in the ways that you know they're asking for the funds and we respected that very much uh, it is even uh, 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 two addresses, like when you look at it, like two properties. Uh, but we really did focus in, as, uh, uh, as on this as one project. That's kind of how we looked at it, and we, and we counted the impact of one project that will have to the town and the village district. And that was the approach from the committee. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. At this point, though, we're going to open the public hearing and no one has signed up, so we'll close the public hearing. Any final comments from the board? If not, tackle the motion, please. Motion to enter into a downtown development investment agreement with the Pimento Tea Room business owner, Matthew Griffith, for the property located at 200 and 202 North Main Street in Holly Springs to reimburse all town development fees in the amount of and not to exceed 18000 Dollars and to reimburse $25,000 in public infrastructure improvements. Second. Motion made, signal all favor. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I'm ready for the sandwiches and cookies. Thank you. <laughs> Etc. All right. Thank you, Irina. Councilman Barry and I were just talking about how we need a good brunch spot. In town, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 10 item 7B, public hearing, voluntary annexation A1908, Wake County Board of Education, Melissa Sigmund, Planning and Zoning. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this item, as mentioned, is a rezoning or a, an annexation request um, for a future Wake County school, elementary and middle school site uh, located near the Carolina Springs development. The action items this evening are to conduct the public hearing and then adopt the annexation ordinance A19-08. To orient you to the site, as I mentioned, uh, it is located to the southwest of the, um, the large Carolina Springs um, planned unit development. Uh, this property itself is just under 74 acres. It is contiguous to town boundaries of that portion of Carolina Springs that is across the street. Um, and so they are looking to annex that. At this time, there's not a development plan in review. However, it is with the understanding that they would plan to do that next. So they are getting their ducks in a row uh, to move forward with development in the future on this site. With that, take any questions you may have regarding the Questions topic. so far? Looking good. At this point in time, we'll again open a public hearing. No one signed up, so we'll close the public hearing. I would like to uh, ask the Board of Education, who I think is here, but I'd like to say a few words. Thank you for coming to. I haven't seen you guys for a while. Good to see you. Again. Well, we are excited before you tonight on this annexation request. Uh, for the record, my name is Kenneth Haywood, 5410 Trinity Road in Raleigh. I am um, attorney for the West Virginia Board of Education. Please be before you tonight. The mayor and I go back many, many years. I remember over 16 years ago, we were looking at some schools, and he was very helpful in terms of that process. It's always been very kind of thank you. So I appreciate it. the fact that uh, I get, still get to see you whenever I come out here to the next meeting. It's nice to see you again, Mayor. Um, in terms of the annexation, uh, the staff has presented everything correctly in terms of this little under 74 acre site. Obviously, the clerk of annexation checks the sufficiency of the application, very minimal requirements in terms of what needs to meet for an annexation of the statute. It is a continuous parcel voluntary annexation and we just appreciate your consideration of the annexation of the site so we can look forward to being able to eventually um, have a new elementary middle school in the town of public springs jurisdiction with that um, i really don't have a whole lot of extensive comments on this annexation but did want the council to know that we take this seriously enough to be here tonight to say hello to thank you and um, look forward to continuing to work with staff uh, as we go through process thank you so much for coming High school, I mean, <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> I didn't say that. Any other questions? Thoughts? We're all good? Thanks, sir. Thanks. All right, at this point in time, um, again, we had a, uh, no one signed up for a public, uh, for a public comment, so uh, uh, at this point in time, unless there's other comments, we're ready for the motion. Motion to adopt annexation ordinance A19-06 annexing 73.587 plus or minus acres owned by Wake County Board of Education, more particularly described as Wake County uh, PIN 0730330409. Second. Motion to remain second, all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you again for coming, both of you. Appreciate it. Safe trip back. Agenda item 7C, public hearing rezoning A19 REZ06 Regency at Holly Springs. Uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa, Melissa Sigmund, planning and zoning. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> as long as you don't call me late for dinner, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so this evening we have the next item is a rezoning for Regency at Holly Springs. However, we are going to ask council to table the discussion and public hearing to your next meeting on February 4th. Um, in order to allow uh, proper public notice. So this was no fault of the applicant, uh, but just to ensure that we meet all of the notification standards, having the site posted with the appropriate time period. So that extra two weeks ensures that everyone has full notice. Um, additional postcards were sent out to those folks notified um, so that they will be aware of that February 4th date should they wish to attend. And we were going to make an exception to this if anybody had signed up tonight uh, for this anyway, that we're going to listen to them, but nobody did. So. 
I think we're ready for the motion. Motion to table public hearing and discussion of the February 4th, 2020 town council meeting. Second. Mr. Main, second all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Melissa. Agenda item 8A, consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem. Motion to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Motion to be made in second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item 9A, uh, this is new business. The annual board of adjustment and planning board appointments. And I must say, before we even get into this, there was at least 20 to 30 people who signed up, and I, I, I actually took the time to read all the resumes. Yeah, a bunch of great, great people signing up for these kind of things, and I appreciate that. <laughs> so at this point in time, I'm going to turn over to somebody who knows what they're doing. Linda McKinney, town clerk, and you're in charge. All right, the, the purpose of this is to make your annual appointments to the Board of Adjustment and the Planning Board, and also we have a partial term vacancy on the Planning Board. Board of Adjustment, there are three term, three three-year terms open. One in-town member, one in-town alternate member, and one from the extraterritorial jurisdiction or ETJ alternate member. The planning board, there are two in-town members with three-year terms ending February 28th, 2023, one ETJ member with that three-year term, and then there is a two-year vacancy ending February 28th, 2022 for an in-town member. You voted by ballot, and we're gonna have some tiebreakers, but let me just first read the ballot count, the vote count for each item. For the in-town members, Board of Adjustment, vote for two. Jason Green received four votes. Morgan Wiley re received four votes. Oscar Duarte received one vote, and Thomas Urquhart received one, so we will need to do a tiebreaker on Jason Green and Morgan Wiley. To just to determine who's the alternate and who's right. the regular. And the, from the ETJ, Elaine Krieger received three votes, William Elmore received one vote, and Megan Savage received one vote. On the planning board, you were to vote for three, two of the in-town members, two of those for three-year terms, one for a two-year term. Chris DeShazer received five votes, Van Crandall received four votes, Thomas Urquhart received two votes. David Arnold received one vote. Donna Friend received one vote. And Larry O'Neill received one vote. From the ETJ on the planning board, there is one opening. Sam Ding received two votes. Mark Stuckey received two votes. And Megan Savage received one vote. So we will need to have a tiebreaker between Sam Ding and Mark Stuckey for that position. Questions or comments? Can you go through, I'm sorry, the planning Certainly. board, um, the votes there? Okay. Planning board in town? Yes. Chris DeShazer, five. Okay. Dan Crandall, four. Thomas Urquhart, two. David Arnold, one. Donna Friend, one. Larry O'Neill, one. And there are Chris three three positions. Or third one was what again? I'm sorry. The third position you mentioned? There are three openings on planning board. Chris DeShazer received five votes, Van Crandall four, Thomas Urquhart two, David Arnold one, Donna Friend one, Larry O'Ne one. So Thomas would be, okay. So unless you want to do it differently, Chris and Van would be the in-town members and Thomas Urquhart would be the, the two, for the three-year terms, right. Thomas Urquhart was the two-year term, right. unless y'all want to do something different. That makes sense, yes. Okay with that? Okay with that consensus. Yeah. And go backwards again on the Board of Adjustment to me. Sure. Please. Board of Adjustment, Jason Green received four votes. Morgan Wiley received four votes. Oscar Duarte won. Thomas Urquhart won. There are two openings, one regular and one alternate. So my recommendation is that you vote between Jason Green and Morgan Wiley who you want to be the regular member and who right. the alternate. Comments? They tied so one can be one thing and one can be the other. Make sense? 
I think both of those are reappointments. Uh, Morgan's the current member and Jason's the current alternate. I, my vote would be to, re to remain, uh, to keep it intact that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Works for me. That makes sense? Yep. Uh, we're all good with that? That's consensus. I take care of us, Linda? Yep. Okay. Do you want to, somebody want to make a motion? Somebody want to make a motion if they got the names? Motion to appoint the following people to the Board of Adjustment with terms ending February 28th, 2023. Jason Green as in town member and Morgan Wiley. Oh, sorry. The other way? Yeah, Morgan. Oh, Morgan Wiley as the in town member. Right. No, you, I thought yeah. it said the other way. Okay, and Jason Green as the in town alternate. Okay. The so way it was? Yeah. yeah. Second. Okay. Motion to be made to hear a second? Second. Motion to be made to say all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Next. For the ETJ, um, Ellen Krieger was the clear winner, unless y'all want to revisit the two. She received three votes, the other two each received one. Okay. Motion to recommend that Wake County Board of Commissioners appoint the following person to the Board of Adjustment with term ending February 28th, 2023. Elaine Krigger as ETJ alternate member. Sorry. What's been made second all favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion, motion passed unanimously. Think that did it? Still got two more. <laughs> two more. Well, that's right. Um, planning board, if you leave it in the order of the votes, you would have Krista Shazer and Van Crandall as, with three year terms mm -hmm. and Thomas Urquhart with a two year term. There were also three people who received one vote each. So good. Motion to appoint the following people to the planning board. Krista Sager and Van Crandall as in-town members of terms ending February 28, 2023, and Tom Thomas Urquhart as in-town member with term ending 20, February 28, 2022. Second. Motion to be made second all favor. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. That did it, right? Not quite. <laughs> And Linda, thank you for doing this. This this is a lot easier than the way we used to do it. I appreciate your help. For the ETJ, we have a tie between Sam Dean and Mark Stuckey with two votes each. There is one opening, so we need to break that tie. Comments? Let's do a roll call vote, I guess. Sure. Well, we got one, two, three, four. Somebody's going to win. <laughs> Want to go back to do the two names again for me, Linda? Sam Ding and Mark Stuckey. Pick one and pass it on. I voted for Sam. Uh, Mark Stuckey. Mark Stuckey. Sam. Mark Stuckey. Sounds like Mark Sutton. Yeah. Yep. Motion. Motion to recommend that Wake County Board of Commissioners appoint the following person to the planning board with term ending February 28th, 2023. Mark Stuckey as ETJ member. Second. Motion made, second all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Whew. Again, thank you for not only doing this before, before time, but uh, are we happy with the way this is going this time, with the way we're doing it? The only thing is I wanted to share the criteria. I, it'd be interesting, I think, for folks to hear why why we picked who we picked. Sure. So I think that's important. Uh, go right ahead. Whoever wants to say anything about that before we go to number 10, how would that be? Um, for myself, um, location is, is critical. So I, the map that is provided has a lot of information, so I appreciate that. And um, when I looked at the, and I felt the distribution is starting to get really balanced across the town. When I looked at the members and I had supported um, Chris and Ben coming back, I saw their participation in our revision plan and felt that it was important to keep that information moving forward. And I attend pretty much every planning board meeting and they, they happen to ask a lot of questions, which is something else that I think is really important. So that's, that's why I put them forward. Um, and then the other folks, I don't know if they, they I, I had different people to pick, but they were all great candidates. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had the same sort of, of um, rationale for, the, for the, uh, the Board of Adjustments as well. So location, looking at history, um, it, it, the passion that people have, so the folks that took extra care to say the why, I think was important for me as well. So that was my rationale. 
I would say the same. I mean, looking at the map, trying to uh, balance out who we mm -hmm. have on the planning board to make sure that every uh, major development area is, is covered. I know, you know, having spent obviously some time on the planning board, I think that's important to get a voice from uh, all these different areas of town. Uh, and, and just as importantly as I looked at that was also what the applicants put forward. So whether or not they actually put together an idea of why they wanted to be on the planning board and showed some level of understanding of what the planning board actually does and then and, and then a resume obviously helps. So that may be something that we communicate in the future that I think, you know, here here's the application, but you know, your your background information I think helps greatly as well to understand Good here are the other things that you bring uh, to the board. Uh, because those of us who have spent time either on the planning board or with the planning board members know that you know that diversity of skill set of what you do as a professional on the outside of your planning board business as a volunteer is, is important because uh, that brings different perspectives for everyone. So I certainly look at that to try and have a little bit of variety uh, in people's backgrounds and, and what they bring to the discussion. Sure. Good point. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add, you know, Geographic dispersion is one thing we look at. Um, I think I equally weight that with qualifications and involvement in other town areas. Um, you know, how, how long have people been in town? I like, to, I like to see a mix, you know, not having people that have been here 20 some mm -hmm. years. You know, you don't want a whole board comprised of, of longtime residents. I think it's good to have a mix of people that have been here all different, uh, all different lengths of time. And I think we've done that. Um, and, and, you know, surprisingly, we, there's a lot of qualified technical people that reside in this town. And sometimes it's hard to look at 20 applications. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to have four more to a point on here just because of what these people do professionally and how they could add to the process. Um, so it's not easy to narrow that down and, and get to a, a number of people. Uh, so thanks to everybody that, that had applied and, um, you know, look forward to your service over the next couple of years. Well said. I don't want to add much to it. I, I, echo uh, what everybody has said so far it's and it's, it's not an easy process there's a lot of a lot of applications to review and and whittle down and, and use the criteria as previously mentioned to come up with you know really what is too small a number yeah, it seems tough. like because there is so much so many qualified folks and it, it, it's awesome to see that level of uh, interest in in serving the town uh, yeah I would second the just having a good variety and mix of geographic locations, experience, <coughs> time in town was important so that we're getting a nice mix of perspectives. The written answers were really important to me that people took the time and thought um, to put forward what they truly believed was best for the town, not just necessarily what we wanted to hear. Um, and everybody was really impressive. This took a lot longer than I assumed it would because there were a lot of tough decisions. Um, sitting in on the planning board, I've been incredibly impressed with how they operate, how they work together as a group, and that played heavily into my um, decisions uh, and making sure that people had made efforts to get involved in the past, um, to pay attention to what the planning board was doing. Because as Ms. Compton spoke to earlier, time is of the essence, and um, it's not necessarily we don't have a lot of time for people to get their feet wet and get moving because the business won't stop uh, as people learn the function of the planning board. So having that knowledge coming in and being the takeoff running was important to me. Just to add one thing, the um, a lot of people, I think, not are sure of, of how important the planning board and their function does for our town. Um, I look at it this way. We have at, at Campo MPO a TCC group, and they do all the tough looking at different issues and, and going through the different options. And then when it comes time to the executive board, we vote yay or nay, and we usually vote yay. And again, uh, Kendra Parrish is a member of that board, and uh, we appreciate their help. Otherwise, it make our job an awful lot harder, and we appreciate their input. That doesn't mean it's always going to be the same and it's always going to be yes or no, but again, Bernie, we thank you and your board for everybody that's like that. Anything else on that one? We'll do it again same time next year. And be ready. Okay. I have 10 other business. I'll just do my crosswalk safety speech 1,000 times. Um, I still want to remind everybody in town, if there is a button, if there is a button that you press to turn it on, please do it. I did see a lady standing there for about five minutes waiting at the, at the corner. 
and all she had to do is press the button. Now, well, you don't have a button, then you have to stand right by the street. You can't stand back. But crosswalk safety continues to be a, a number one priority of ours, as does our new hospital, which is coming along. The steel is up. And if you go by it, you will see, I think our first patient is planned for July 2021, was it? Am I right? I think it's summer 21, yes. I think it's right. Maybe so anyway, people press the button. <laughs> and, yeah. and to get there, you don't have to press a button. <laughs> Good line, Aaron. So that's my story, ladies and gentlemen. I have a few things. Go. I had the fortunate opportunity to attend an all-day Live Well Wake event last Wednesday, which had, I guess, 150 folks from private, public, um, different governments, the Wake County level, talking about key issues that are happening across Wake County and looking at initiatives to raise the health around for different topics such as housing, vulnerable populations, um, health and welfare. So it was a great learning experience. It was a lot of dialogue and hearing some ideas and looking at actionable plans. And the plan is to have some of these ideas put down for two year type of increments. So that was a great, great event. I was fortunate to run into a couple of Wake County commissioners there. So I bend their ear around our landfill issues. So they're well aware um, that this is a big problem for many folks in our town and we have to keep beating that drum to make sure that it's just not something that they have to, they have to help us. And, and I think you can help us, Randy, to know that there's some meetings happening. She can update us on that. But um, to the residents, because I know you're posting about the landfill, we, we are on it. We are making waves and hopefully we can get some movement there. And then last but not least, I was uh, fortunate to participate in, in five different MLK weekend events, three in our town, two in Fuquay. They were all fabulous events, um, a great testimony to the, um, the spirit of Dr. King and how he has energized people to keep living his dream of trying to move it forward. And uh, the thank you town for helping us with the walk and the different events that we had. It was a real pleasure and honor to be there. And, um, I can look forward to doing this again next year. That's it for me. Anybody else? I didn't, I didn't have anything, but I'll, um, I thought of something as I was sitting here, actually, Good. real quick. I know we've had a number of um, residents come in the last couple of meetings and talk about neighborhood speeding issues, specifically in Sunset Ridge. Yep. And um, last Friday in our uh, weekly briefing memo, the, the police department provided some statistics of the enforcement action that's been taking place out there. So just as a, a matter of public record, I wanted to go ahead and list off some of these numbers. And I know town administration staff and perhaps the chief met with these folks last week. Um, but in, in 2019, so this is before and after we had a resident presentation at the meeting. It was on 12-3, but before and after that, uh, the 2019 totals at the, the last end of the year, there were 67 traffic stops, 45 citations were given, and 22 verbal warnings. In 2020, six stops, three citations, and three warnings. These are neighborhood streets, uh, Linksland and and Salem Ridge um, so you know for those residents that have come we've heard you we've you know worked with our, our administration staff and our police department to uh, enforce the speed limits I think engineering has been out there to look at an intersection as well um, so we've heard you and, and we've we've got resources deployed in that area those are just you know my own take is those are big numbers for neighborhood streets so we, we hear you and um, you know 45 citations that's that's a lot and um, probably more than you'd see out of the average 67 traffic stops. So good work to our police department folks and, and town staff for jumping on that. Just to piggyback on that good comment, um, we don't make much money on that. So don't think it's a money making affair. Right, Chief? Right. Mayor, we don't make any money on that. Yeah. I think it's two dollars. Right. Some maybe be two dollars a ticket. I'm not sure. All set? All set? Okay. Uh, just one more thing to piggyback on, on what uh, the MLK. I, I was honored to do the uh, welcoming again this year at the Public Arts Center. I think we had about 100 and probably 30 or 50 people there. But the thing I want to mention was we had a special guest. It was Jacques Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert really, he says, I say Gilbert, uh, who's the mayor of Apex. And uh, we have a friend in court over there, and that's a good thing. We, we had some issues in the past. Uh, 
with Apex, but I think they've joined the crowd now, and I, I really look forward to working with Chalk. And he was a special guest that followed me, and uh, I think the Apex Holly Springs is like this right now, and as it is everywhere else. So we're, we're back on pace. Other than that, the manager's report. Great. Thank you, Mayor Sears and Council members. I have two quick items for you today. The first, I think, as you know, we've been working on a sidewalk gap, closing the sidewalk gap up near Optimus Farm Road and Sunset Lake Road. I'm happy to report that we are essentially just finished that project. We have some uh, last, the last items were some temporary striping that we needed to have in place. Uh, and then we'll put some permanent striping in later in the, um, in the late winter or early spring when the temperatures just get a little bit warmer, but uh, we're ready to open it. And so over the course of the next week, we're going to be looking for a time to have maybe a ceremonial walk on the, uh, on the <laughs> sidewalk segment. So we'll be following up with you and probably uh, Cassie Hack um, and our public works team. And we'll try to get the public works crew that was out there who installed the sidewalk. But uh, hopefully I invite some neighborhood and, and any other community residents who'd like to come and, and be part of that walk. So more to come on that. But just want to let you know that we're trying to put something together here for the next week. The second item, I want to thank the community. Uh, recently here we did a survey request for input on the what characteristics the next police chief should have and so i'm very grateful we had uh, uh, a good response from the community very helpful feedback and input so i just want to recognize that um, and um, but that feedback is really helpful in terms of shaping the type of qualities leadership components um, and attributes that the community is looking for in their next police chief so just wanted to acknowledge that thank you very much just to piggyback uh our chief of police is is not is not being fired <laughs> he's retiring he's retiring quite early in his life which i'm jealous of but uh stu chief uh, counselor closed session uh mr mayor i understand the council would like to uh, go into closed session to discuss um the um uh, personnel evaluation of the town attorney and the town clerk um in uh pursuit of North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A6. Um, 86, was it? But that's A6, yes, sir. Uh, to discuss the quality, uh, character, and performance of those two um, uh, people. So that's up to one of y'all to make that motion if you'd like to do so. So I want to make a motion. So moved. Mayor Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 We're in closed session. Thank you for coming. Aye.